All right, everybody, thanks for your, uh, standing by. I'm with my buddy, Martin Hall. Martin, these live things, we're off to a tough start with these. It's like uh, playing real championship <laughs> golf. You never know what you're going to get. You do don't you? know what you're going to get. You don't know the lie in the fairway that you're going to come up with. It totally is. But we're down here at the Ibis Club. You can see that we're under a uh, tarp here for the moment. The summer thunderstorm is gone away. It doesn't look perfect out there, but we're going to we're going to do the best we can just like you do in golf. So absolutely right. Thanks, thanks for having us to your little slice of heaven. Well, here. It's not, my office is not too bad, is it? No, Dave? it's not, not too bad of an office. We were getting ready just a minute ago and I was asking Martin about a cloud and he, he knew exactly when the water would come out of that particular cloud. You've done this before on this side I've, of the range. I've been on this tee rather a long time. Yeah. All right. Let's jump right into it. First of all, I want to thank all you guys for your patience for jumping out in. Second of all, everybody that's jumped on the early bird list, thousands and thousands and thousands, we really appreciate it, both Martin and I. And for all of you folks that have sent in thousands and thousands of these question surveys, we appreciate it because now we know what to talk about. Absolutely do. Yeah, and so the topic today are two different things. Uh, contact and distance. I'm saving distance for last. That's just like the dessert, Martin. Everybody, <laughs> everybody wants to know about distance, so we're going to make them wait a little isn't, bit longer. Isn't that the truth? And uh, we're going to start with solid contact. And um, uh, when we were down here a few months ago shooting with you, I thought I was absolutely fascinated with every second of the, t of the time we shot the video camera. But when we talked about solid contact and sort of your revelation over the years of teaching the game and how that had changed, you had my attention and I know you're going to have their attention as well. So, well, my, my thing, Justin, was when I when I, I mean, I tried to play, had to, you know, play some on the European tour, some national open and stuff like that. But um, when I started to teach, the big thing back then was you had to teach everybody to hit a draw. Right. You know, there was something wrong with you if you couldn't hit a draw. And, and I think that view has changed. So I, I developed a style early on to have people swing into out and draw it a bit, which, which certainly has its place in golf. There's no question about that. But as I taught more and more and more, I saw that the biggest problem most people have actually when the ball sits on the ground, uh, which is most of the time, there's two clubs that you don't want to hit the ground with. Right. The big dog and the putter. That's right. And the other 12 between those two, you obviously, you want the club to hit the ground. Yeah. And the solid contact, the sort of the ball turf and, and shots that are hit, not in the toe, not in the heel. Solid contact, I think, is the most essential thing for people enjoying golf. So I'd like to trip outside if we might. Let's do it. And Let's we'll it. risk it out here. All we right. don't know it. It looks a bit dark up there, a bit sort of Armageddon-ish, but we're going right. to give it a go. Yep. So Justin, for solid contact, what, what is solid contact? I mean, there's a good question, isn't it? What is solid contact? Right. Well, for me, solid contact, I don't know if my cameraman can zoom in. If he can't, um, I will no, come towards him. he certainly can. But solid contact to me would mean the ball is hit in the center of the face, not in the toe, not in the heel. Solid contact is in the center of the face. And if the ball is sitting on the ground, which I said with, other than the drive and the putter, it always is. Uh, I mean, unless it's a par three with an iron, you'd want to hit the ball and the ground. There's some relationship between hitting the ball and the ground. Now, so my first revelation was you want to teach people to uh, hit the ball solid. You don't want people making swings where they either bottom out behind the golf ball here, or they do things with their swing where the club's coming up as they hit the ball. Neither of those are very good. And we don't want tone, we don't want heel. Now that would be a big ask. Do we have a drill? Do we have a drill that would illustrate to you, do you hit it fat, thin, toe, heel? Yes, we do. And it's called the white picket fence. So you're at Ibis, you're on my tee, and I've got a sum of my toys. And I mean sum. This is just a, this is a snippet of what I've got over here. So the white picket fence. Uh, I do this with paint on the tee here. I would suggest on your golf course, you don't do this with paint. You'll actually find foot spray works very, very well with this. And I'm going to draw what I call the white picket fence. And I'm going to help you understand fat, thin, toe, heel, and give you some corrections. So I'm doing this with paint. It's my tee. Um, you know, th this will stay for a few days. Foot powder will stay for a day. Uh, I'm just doing this so it's really easy to see on the camera. So I draw one line. And then I'm going to draw, I and mean, that certainly does not look like a white picket fence. But when I do this, mm. 
Now I've got the makings of a white picket fence. Now when it comes to, I think everybody has a mishit tendency actually, Justin, everybody. Yep. Uh, Henrik Stenson just recently won the Open Championship. Uh, sure. Jimmy Walker just won the PGA Championship. Yeah. Uh, Dustin Johnson. No matter how good they are, they will miss it a bit near the toe or the heel or a bit fast or a bit thin. They're very, very good, sure. but they still miss it. So Absolutely. in terms of finding your miss it tendency, I like people to investigate first. I like people to investigate what's going on. And then I like them to integrate some training. And then I like to, to eliminate the miss hit. So it's investigate, it's integrate, and it's eliminate. So this white picket fence here. Now I'm going to hit a bad shot on purpose to start with. Um, I've put that ball right on the corner of the white picket fence. You can probably see that from down the line. I've got it right on the corner. And this is such a powerful drill for you to find out what goes on. And I'm actually going to hit one here. And I'm actually going to do something that would hit the ball in the heel of the club. And I'm going to show you why the picket fence is so helpful. I'll take a divot, but I'm going to hit it in the heel of the club. Now I hit that in the heel of the club. You can probably see that it's the low sh -sh 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 shot to the right. Now that white picket fence, you can see there, if I lay my club down on the ground, I hope my down the line camera can see this. If I lay my club on the ground, the divot is beyond that white picket fence. It's beyond that sort of one part of the white picket fence. That's an absolute indicator that I'm hitting the ball in the heel of the club. That tells me somewhere to go. Let me hit one that would be off the toe of the club. So I'll come to the other end of the white picket fence. And this time, this is such a powerful test to take. So this time I'm going to hit it right off the toe of the club on purpose. And then we're going to get to things you can do about it. But this one will be hit right off the toe. So you can see there, that's a very different divot now. Now the divot, the hole I made in the ground, and it is good to make a hole in the ground, but the hole I made in the ground is now on this side of my golf club. If I get two golf clubs here, you can see that those would be very different patterns here letting me know one's a heel hit, one's a toe hit. If you do this as a test and you see where the divot is, if your divot's out beyond the white picket fence there, you're a heel hitter. If the divot's inside the picket fence here, you're a toe hitter. And then we've got the fat and the thin. And then I'm going to tell you what you can do about those, how you can get into the miss hit fixes. I mean, the fat and the thin, well, they're pretty easy, actually, because the thin might be the two types of thin, by the way, the one thin is the obvious one where people hang back and, you know, they hit up at the golf ball and take no divot. If I hit, didn't take any divot, if I didn't touch the ground at all, then obviously I've hit that ball thin. And, and clearly, I think you'll know what's coming next. If I hit the ground too much on this side of the line, clearly then I've hit the ball fat. There is one other thin shot though, and this is the one the good players tend to hit. The other thin shot is where really, really good players get too far ahead of the ball. They hit the ball and the divot doesn't show up until somewhere over there. I'm going to do that without the golf ball. I used to think the golf was ball then turf. I don't think that anymore. It's ball and turf. This would be ball then turf. If there's a ball here, this would be ball then turf. Look at that, I took the divot way in front of the ball. That would be horrible. It would be horrible. So the last one I'm going to do here, I'm going to try and get this one just right, which may not be easy. But I like people to hit a little bit of paint here, a little bit of paint at the same time they hit the golf ball. Now, if you touch a little bit of paint at the same time you hit the golf ball and you leave a nice divot um, that we can inspect with the uh, picket fence, you're going to hit a lot of solid shots. That one was a little bit fat. I certainly wasn't going to hit it thin. And as I say, I'm not saying I'm perfect at this game. Nobody is. Uh, this is a great drill that people should do just about all of the time. So something with solid hitting there. You know, I think this is terrific. It's actually a few days ago, I, right after Stenson won the Open Championship, I went straight to YouTube and started looking at because I was fascinated at how solid he hit it. I could not believe how many videos there are of Henrik Stenson shanking the ball on YouTube. 
he must struggle with the heel hit. You know, that must be his miss. I, I didn't know that, but, but I know everybody has one, Justin. Yes. Everybody has so, one. They hit a lot in the middle, but if you do this drill, right. it'll be great. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you an option as well, because right. it is my playground. Yes, it is. And so uh, the other thing you can do to get some idea, if you don't want to go to the elaborate lengths, although I'd really recommend you do, of painting lines, because it will make a difference, is you can get two little bamboo skewers like this that you might put shrimp on or you know some vegetables when you're barbecuing. And these work really well to give you a gate to swing through. I, I have a really strong belief. There's, there's a lot of technique in golf. We talk about it, Martin Chuck talks about it, Andrew Rice talks mm -hmm. about it, Jim McLean talks about it, we all do. And you know, there's lots of angles and things we've got to talk about, but there's an element of coordination in golf. And you can refine, you can improve your coordination by doing certain exercises on a consistent basis. Please do this. If you did nothing else, do this. Put your club right behind the ball, Put one of those bamboo sticks fractionally, I mean fractionally, outside the toe of the club. Put the other one at the angle of the shaft, just inside the club. I mean, I've given myself no room there. And now I'm just going to roll that ball back so it sits on that line. Now, if I do it properly, I should be able to, ooh, that's tight. I should be able to hit that ball from right between those two pegs without hitting either of them. And my divot would begin right below the ball. Yeah, the lion's share of the divot shows up over here. Of course it does. But I don't want people trying to hit the ball, then the turf. I think you hit the ball and the turf. And there's a huge difference there. I'm going to give you one drill for that in a minute. So quite a narrow gap there. Let's see what I can do this time. Quite a narrow gap to swing through. And that one was much better. That just touched the ground there. And make no mistake, touching the ground is the equivalent of a divot. So very good there. If you wanted something you could do in the back garden, leave those two sticks there. Just put a T in the middle and just see if you can clip that middle wicket. I'm English cricket. Let's have a little bit of middle wicket for the English people watching this one. If you can hit the middle wicket, then you're on your way to hitting lots of solid golf shots. That would be solid. I don't know if it'd be straight, but it'd be solid. And so many times we say, if only I could hit it with my practice swing. My great mentor, John Jacobs, would say, I think it's probably a good job you don't. That's because exactly so right. very often people take the practice swing. My practice swing is great. I swing from the inside beautifully. Yeah, you do. You do. You also hit the ground a foot behind the ball. Yeah. So solid hitting, I think, is the single most important thing that will give you pleasure for the game. And, and on my DVD in Ball Striking, I've got six big points yes. about how to pivot and pinch and, and learn to get the ball and turf contact. You know, that's exactly, when I came away from when we filmed here, I realized, you know, you're obviously right, solid contact, whether it's in the wind, bad conditions, there's nothing better than solid contact. And you can go, as long as you're hitting the ball solid and you you sort of know the shape of it, you're going to be in good shape. Yeah, for sure you can. I mean, they used to say back in the day, I remember the very, very, very first time I saw Tom Watson, I was playing in the PGA Championship in Europe and yep. I'd got, I was just a young, young, young player. I got Arnold Palmer over here mm -hmm. and I'd got Tom Watson over here and Seve was just behind him and sure. I was here, Royal yeah. St. George's, sure. and my ball was going, ching! Yep. And over here was Arnold Palmer, bam! bam! And over there was Tom Watson. Bam! Right. And I didn't realize what that was. And there's always these stories about, you know, their ball makes a different sound. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that for a long time. It makes a different sound. What are they, from Planet Krypton or right. something? Are they Superman? Right. You know, they've got two arms, they've got a club. So what is it? When you go to a pro tournament, if you've been to the Open Championship, um, if you've been to the PGA, if you go to the Ryder Cup, sure. and you hear them make a great sound, here's what you're hearing. You are hearing high-speed impact that is centered. Yeah. That's the bam. Bam! Yes. High speed. When it sounds like clunk, it mm -hmm. probably isn't very high speed and it surely isn't centered. Just a little a little tip here. You see, you thought this was going to be one hour. You can't, you wound me up. Keep, you keep can't going, stop keep me going, now, Tupper. Keep going. I'm, I'm going now. Out of this thing. But just when you're out playing, sometimes people say, I, I, I can't feel whether I hit a toe or a heel shot. You can. You really can if you think about it. If you hit it off the toe, it's going to feel like you hit a marshmallow. 
bloop, falls out of the sky like a wounded vulture. Bloop. If you hit it out of the heel, it feels like you've hit a cannonball. And when you hit it out of the middle, well, we all know that one. We'd like to get it more often. But if, feel, if it feels soft and mushy, you're hitting it out of the toe. If it feels like you're hitting a 20 pound cannonball, you're hitting it right out of the heel. So lots of stuff there. I, mean, I could go on about solid contact for three or four days, but I, I suspect you wouldn't let me. No, I wouldn't let you, but it is, it is a big part of your DVD series. It was one of the major ahas I walked away from it. Well, good. And, and, and it was uh, also, I really love the story of you, how you, you know, you said, I used to teach one way, but then I realized after many years that it's really about solid. Well, you, you know, that great American philosopher, Oprah Winfrey, said, <laughs> and I like this, I do like yeah, Oprah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. but she said, and I love this, for golf, when you know better, you do better. Yeah. And that's what we try and do with Revolution Golf. When you know better, we do better. Sure. Yeah. We got some uh, questions. Sure. All right. Um, questions. Go. I love questions. Yeah. Where should the ball p p be positioned to hit correctly? So where should ball position be with irons on solid contact? Yeah, no, that's a that, very... That is a good question. It's, it's a very good question. It's not a black and white question. No. Nope. One of my heroes that I didn't meet was Harvey Pennick. Yep. And, and I did a lot of work with one of his uh, protégés, Mark, um, Mark Steinbauer. And, and Mark said this about, uh, about Harvey Pennick. He said, it didn't matter what question you asked Harvey. Should I keep the left arm straight or should it bend? Should the left wrist be bowed? Should it be cupped? Should I slide a lot or should I stay centered? Should I stay in a barrel? Should I stay behind it? Should I move in front of it? What Harvey Penny would always say is, now that depends. Yeah. So when you say, what ball position should I have? I say, well, now that depends. So let me, let me talk about some ball position thing. There is no one position. It depends on what sort of lie you have. It depends on what sort of shot you want to hit. It can have many variables. I suppose if you live in the perfect world of hitting perfect strikes at perfect heights that are perfectly straight, a good starting position with a mid iron here would be a, a couple of inches just inside the left heel. So it's just somewhere sort of under my Strixon logo on my shirt. But here's the thing in golf, we don't stay still. Some people have an awful lot of slide. I think of the great Byron Nelson, who won 18 tournaments in one year. If you have an awful lot of slide, effectively you've moved the ball position. If you slide a lot, you probably want the ball forwards. If you turn quickly, I think of Justin Leonard, who won the 1997 Open Championship, he probably wants the ball where I put it there. If you want to draw the ball, probably best to play the ball back because you'll be getting the ball while you're on the way to, you know, you'll be swinging out to hit a draw. If you want to fade the ball, especially with a driver, you might want to play the ball more forward. So, you know, the idea that there's a, the idea that there's a perfect ball position is not true. We live not far here from the Bears Club where Jack Nicholas uh, built it. It's his, it's his Augusta National of the South. And I worked for Jack for seven years and a few years ago, uh, he talked to the Palm Beach amateurs, and, and, and at lunchtime, someone said, uh, Mr. Nicholas, um, you had such a wonderful career, 18 professional majors. I take it you just had one swing thought for that entire time. He laughed out loud. He said, he said I've never been one day with <laughs> one swing thought. You know, I have thousands of swing thoughts. And I remember Jackie Burke saying about Ben Hogan that, you know, the five lessons, he said it should have been the 5,000 lessons because there's so much. So uh, that's a bit of a long-winded answer, but the answer really is it depends. If you want better ball turf contact and you want to draw it, I would suggest you play it back. Yeah, and, and you know, from ball back, you'll hit it a bit lower. It's a hell of a lot easier. It's a hell of a lot easier to start the ball right and turn it over there. And if you did want to fade the golf ball a little bit, if that was your, if that was your thing, as it was for Nicholas, then you'd perhaps want to play that ball forwards a bit and that's going to hit it higher and it's going to, you know, help, you know, hit that ball up in the air with a bit of fade. And to some degree, it depends where you play. If you play in Texas, back is probably good. If sure. you play in Columbus, Ohio, forwards is probably good. That's that was a short answer, wasn't it? That was it? a short answer, exactly right. <laughs> so as I was just saying, we have put together an awesome DVD set uh, with Martin. And what I want to do right now is have, have Dave roll a clip that here of, uh, 
of the second DVD, which is all about uh, solid contact. Now, I keep using the word DVD. We're going to have both DVD and streaming available. So you're going to be able to watch it on your computer, your phone, your iPad, however you want. You're also going to have hard copies if that's how you choose also. Um, but I wanted you guys to take a little look at that. Again, this was shot here at the Ibis Club. Uh, Martin did an incredible job, four hours of content, over four hours of content with all the DVDs. And uh, it was just a real pleasure to do it and shoot it with you. And I'm so thankful that we got it uh, recorded and, and su it's such organized content for people to be able to watch. Well, you know, just it was uh, when you brought me on board, mm -hmm. um, you, you said, are you ready for this? It's like, I've been getting ready for this for 38 years. Exactly I think those are right. my exact words yeah. to you. And, and this is everything I've learned to date. Yes. And I, I've had a long journey, driven off a few cliffs head first. There's no question about that. But I've had a long journey. And I, I, I don't think I know everything about golf, but I think I know a fair amount. And I, and, and so. I think I do fairly well with having people, um, you know, simplifying it. One, one of my favorite phrases, complexity is the enemy of execution. It really is. Sure. I, of course you can talk about the science of the golf swing, mm -hmm. and it has its place. But when it's time to go out and play and hit it over the water at the 13th, if you can have a simple thought yeah. that does the job, I'm all in for that one. Absolutely. So I want to make sure that you folks, if you're not on the early bird list, below this video there's a form. Now what an early bird list is this? We're going to notify you on Monday before we notify the other 2 million people at Revolution Golf and give you an opportunity to make sure you get the both the DVD and the streaming series before everybody else. Um, I believe we're going to have a massive success with this. We've only printed a certain amount. It is a lot, but I think we're going to sell through them all on the first run. So make sure you get on the early bird for that reason. And we've got some awesome contests and drawings gone for you folks that on the early bird list. In fact, there's a grand prize to come to this tee where I'm standing with this, this man. This this one. Yeah, with yeah, this, yeah. With this man, with a new set of Strixon golf clubs from our friends at Strixon. So jump on that early bird list. We appreciate you guys for all being on here. It looks like we still have an amazing attendance of people. So, Justin, let's uh, go to the preview so I can see what they're going to get. Okay, so can you roll that and it sure. has audio? Does yep. the preview have audio? Yep. It does not have audio. So, okay, so well, let's just hold the preview for a little bit, little bit later. We just talked about what I wanted to cover there. Because right. here's what I want to do. There's a lot of people that are waiting for distance and they, they want to talk about distance. They all have their hands up because, you know, I've been, we've been running Revolution Golf now for seven, almost eight years. Over three million people have come through the doors. Without question, everybody wants to know about distance. Do you find it any different on this very lesson? No, I, no absolutely not. I, I think you can go to any tour, LPGA, PGA, Champions, I mean, European. If you could get another 10 or 15 yards, they're all in for it, mo yep. most certainly. But, and, and maybe at the most elite level, that's tricky. Yep. Uh, but for most people, ooh, did you hear that nasty yeah. noise? That might be uh, our that, sign. That might be. Let me, let me just say something, and so until then, we don't want to see any electricity flashing Definitely around. Definitely not, no. Nope. Um, but something about distance, look, yep. there, there is in golf, Distance is club head speed applied correctly. Please hear me on that. It's not just club head speed. Club head speed applied correctly would mean that you can't be hitting a glancing blow. No matter how speedy your golf swing is, if you're really glancing across the ball, I'm actually going to hit two shots here. You probably won't be able to see the distance the ball goes. But if I had a launch monitor up, I'm going to give you approximate distances. The first one, I'm going to swing as quick as I can, but a very glancing blow, hit in the heel, and that ball's probably gone 140 yards, something like that. This will be a lot less speed, but it will be hit from what we'd call the inside, and this ball's probably gone about 200 yards, something like that. So club head speed applied correctly. Now there's a certain part on the club that you must not hit the ball on. Come here, Mr. Cameraman, I'm coming towards you. I'm coming to show you. Have you got me? Do you see where my finger is there? You do, don't you? Please stop hitting the ball there. It's a terrible place. It's the Death Star. It really is the black hole 
of distance. So we don't want any hitting there. It's making a lot of noises up there, Justin. What yeah. do you think? I think we should probably, I just saw a big bolt over there. So I think we should probably wrap this up. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to get out here early tomorrow morning. We're yes. going to shoot some more content about driver, uh, hitting your driver more solid and longer. And we're going to make sure everybody who's on here and everybody who jumps on this early bird uh, list gets these special videos from Martin. Is that fair to do for these folks? Absolutely. I am going to make sure that Mr. Tupper follows up with <laughs> how you can get more distance. So you're actually going to get two videos from this one. So exactly. we'll, be, we'll be sending you another video. So we can do that as long as we're not electrocuted. Exactly. So I think so it's, it's goodbye from me and it's <laughs> goodbye from him. Yeah, we're going to get out of here. But thanks everybody for tuning in. Look in your inbox. We'll send you these videos and we'll see you again tomorrow with another live event. Hi, Justin Tupper here, CEO and founder of Revolution Golf. I'd like to personally thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to watch our video with one of our newest and most experienced instructors, Martin Hall. As you can tell, Martin is extremely passionate about golf and helping players like yourselves get better. Now, before you go, I want to tell you about something special that's happening next week. I recently spent a week with Martin, and we didn't just film these great tips in the Build a Better Golf Game video series that week. We filmed over four hours of Martin revealing all the secrets he's developed from 38 years of coaching over 100,000 students, from weekend golfers to touring professionals. I can promise you haven't seen these before, and the drills and instruction will help your game immediately. By the way, this new training will not only increase your distance from 20 to 40 yards off the tee, make solid contact every swing, improve your short game by leaps and bounds, and fix all those nagging faults in your game, Martin is going to be doing four video training classes for you, live over the internet from the World Class Club at IBIS in West Palm Beach, Florida. All four classes will be recorded so you can watch them again at any time online or download them to your computer. You'll be able to interact with Martin, ask questions, and see him demonstrating how you can improve every aspect of your game from the comfort of your home or your computer or out of the range with your mobile phone. Now, this is very important. Martin allowed us to film all these secrets exclusively for Revolution Golf. You can't get this training anywhere else. We're releasing a limited number of copies at an extremely discounted rate on Monday, August 8th at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. To make sure you can get a copy at the lowest investment, please make sure you're on the early bird VIP list below. We're going to allow everyone on the early bird VIP list to accept this opportunity a day before anyone else does and give them and you a special early bird VIP price. Plus, joining the early bird VIP list gives you the option to download all of Martin's Build a Better Golf Game series videos and live events this week in HD to view on your desktop or your smartphone. Are you on the early bird VIP list? Simply click on the yes, put me on the VIP list button below this video and check your inbox for the email confirmation from me, Justin Tupper. The subject line will be early bird VIP confirmation, build a better golf game, read now. If you're on the early bird list, be sure to keep your eyes open from any emails from me, Justin Tupper, with early bird VIP in the subject line. And get this, just for joining the Early Bird VIP list, you'll have the opportunity to enter our Build a Better Golf Game sweepstakes. We're giving away an all-expense-paid trip to West Palm Beach, Florida to be personally coached by Martin Hall, along with a custom set of Srixon golf clubs. Here's Martin to tell you all about it. Now hold on to your hats for this one. The grand prize for one lucky player is... An all expenses paid trip from anywhere in the world to West Palm Beach, Florida to be personally coached by myself here at the club at IBIS. Fantastic. And get this, you're also going to receive a custom set of Strixon golf clubs, the clubs I use. And let me tell you about the day you'll spend with me. I'm going to meet you for dinner on arrival to discuss your golf and get to know you. So that should be fun. The next day, you've got Martin Hall all day. I'm going to be working with you one-on-one -on -one looking at your swing using high-speed video, 
launch monitor technology, 3D body analysis system, and the most sophisticated balance platforms available. Also, not to leave this out, an in-depth scientific look at your putting stroke with Sam Putt Lab. In short, all the equipment the top tour pros use to fine-tune their game, I'm going to use to construct a great plan to help you play better. And I mean much better. And then we're going to finish that day. What better way to do it than playing nine holes at the club at Ibis where I can help you on course, your strategy on course, your temperament on course. It'll be great. And perhaps even a cold adult beverage at the end of the day, if that suits you. How does that sound for a day? Now, that comes to a value of nearly $5,000. Yeah, that's right, $5,000. So there you have it. Wow. Now that's a great prize. More information on how to enter our Build a Better Golf Game sweepstakes is in your confirmation email I just sent. If you don't find your early bird VIP confirmation email, please check your junk or spam folder. You should also add my email address to your email program, safe list or safe senders list, so my emails, including prize notifications, reach you. My email is RG Daily Video Tips at e.revolutiongolf.com. That's RG Daily Video Tips at e.revolutiongolf.com. Now, I know that's a mouthful, so we've put it on your screen for you. Now, once you've seen your confirmation email, read it to find out how you can win an all expense paid trip to West Palm Beach, Florida to be personally mentored by Martin Hall and a custom set of. Srixon Golf Clubs. So once again, this is Justin Tupper, and I'll email you when Martin's next video tip or live streaming event is available. Remember, I'm going to be emailing you on Monday, August 8th at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, when we release Martin Hall's brand new video series with over four hours of training on distance, silent contact, the short game, and fixing your faults. in three very different directions, but they were hit with the same swing. And that's why that one went to the target. That's as good a drill as I've got to stop the shank. Sit, be a good girl. Okay, got it.